the U.S. government is your enemy in this, um, and you have to remember that. Uh, no matter who's in charge, they all are trying to psychically damage. Shh. Ladies, gentlemen, them, they, and all, it's showtime! Ha ha! Although, uh, when we do say showtime, uh, we, we do use that term very loosely, as what we've got in store for you today, well, uh, uh, our presenters have really no idea what they're gonna say, because they're all unprepared! So strap yourselves in and brace yourself as the Some Nobodies present PowerPoint Showdown! So start that round of applause as we welcome this week's keynote speaker! Is that, was that me? I'm the keynote speaker. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another conference. Uh, I have collected some amazing professionals to go over, at least to teach me what the title of tonight's topic is going to be. But I had to go far and wide to find people that needed to know everything about the cessation of vital functions in biological life. Now, with me, as always, we have Dylan. Is that just two quotations? Dude. Yeah. <laughs> You're not even trying anymore. I, now you're no. just letting typos just hang out in there. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Well, D Dylan, uh, Terry, how, the what's bad the joke here? The <laughs> how do I do this? You just did. There you but go. Not, you, God, Dylan, Terry. Yeah, but that makes it seem like the Terry part is also in quotes for some reason. It, People right. have air quote. Anyway, <laughs> then we have uh, Michael Colby stealing I'm a bit fine. from Dylan Terry two weeks ago, which is solid. Uh, Michael <laughs> slash Colby, how are you, sir? Uh, I'm, I'm still on all of Dylan's jokes today. <laughs> oh, Ooh, great. This Good is luck. an all Dylan joke episode. Oh, no. We're going to get a TikTok rock block from Nikki Flop Jock <laughs> later on. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we found <laughs> the number one knowledgeable person when it comes to cessation of vital functions in biological life. Big Mikey himself. Michael, you back. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, so good. Honestly, thank you very much for being a part of this. You know, we did put out uh, the feelers a couple weeks ago. Does anybody know anything about cessation of, I'm never going to remember, cessation of vital functions in biological life? And you're like, uh, I have 17 degrees in this, so please right. allow me to talk. And I said, sure, but you got to go second. Uh, now, for those who, are, for those of us who are joining for the very first time, each speaker will be given roughly 10 minutes to present the topic of the week. The cessation of vital functions in biological life. This is a comedy show, guys. Why are we doing this? Uh, <laughs> now, after each presentation, there'll be a short Q&A from the panel. And, of course, we invite any member of the audience to ask as literally as many questions as humanly possible. All we want to do is talk. Uh, after the fourth presentation, the panelists will vote on which speaker will be given the awarded and prized $50,000 scholarship from Sun Nobody's University and the amazing Nostalgia Prize of the Week, which... Thanks to Michael Colby, I could no longer use the bit of looking for it or scrambling <laughs> open a package. But what we did get is this beautiful uh, bejeweled Duncan yo-yo. This is a butterfly uh, official. There is a serial number on here and everything. Uh, this came from an ex-president. Um, not of this country, oh. but either way, they are, they are a Patreon <laughs> member. So what does that like is it? That is a yo-yo, in fact. It's a, oh, it's a Duncan bejeweled yo-yo. Yes. Uh, if it and, wasn't a Duncan, then it wasn't a yo-yo. Well, yeah. Then it's just like a piece of rope, I think. I have well, no idea, do you? Yeah. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I can <laughs> confirm with my 17 degrees that that is true. Okay. Well, then I guess I need to go no further on yo-yos. Uh, we have a lot of ados. Dylan says, let's skip them and get on with it. So if we can go ahead and bring up my presentation. Once again, the cessation vital functions in human beings and the secret of death and what comes after. Now, the most important thing to learn about the cessation of vital functions and bodily biological f forms, what is it? Bio anyway, biological human beings, the human beings that are biological is the fact that parts of us can die and the rest of us can thrive. That's what a lot of people have not understood yet. Uh, usually when part of you die, you're like, that's it. The rest of me is going. No, my friend. There's secrets to this. There's secrets to death. And there's secrets to also what comes after death. So let's turn the page on life. And next slide, please. Now, what, 
Now, what happens when you die? Number one, the body hits the floor. <laughs> oh, this is such a Dylan one. Uh, one, something's got to give. Two, something's got to give. Three, something's got to give. Uh, no, no, two, the heart stops. As soon as you hit the floor, your heart will immediately stop because it just wants to quit. Uh, a quest... A quest bequeathed upon the spirit, return to new or remain forever. Now, you got to roll to figure out which one of these two you got to go through. But trust me, that heart's going to stop. Number three, your bowels empty. This is probably the most impressive thing because it's not like it does it quietly. It comes with a force, my friend. So watch out for that one. And number four, there's also scavengers descend. Uh, now, them crooked eaters come out of chomping for your tasty bits. That's true. Uh, there are what I call human crabs out there. And as soon as your body hits the floor, one, something's got to give. Two, something's got to give. Three, <laughs> something's got to give. And it's usually your extremities because they're going to pull those off pretty quickly. Next slide, please. Let the, let the body hit the floor. That's what that is, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Where do you go when you die? It's literally one of the top <laughs> get asked. They're like, Jack Wise, where do you go when you die? And I said, I haven't died yet, but I have the answer. You go beyond the dark forest. Now, that seems pretty spiritual, and it is. Because the trees, they press close. Their limbs curled like the claws of a jealous witch. It's almost like you can't get out of the grass once you go into there, and then obviously beyond. There's also now beneath the looming mountain. Uh, loiter not with its terrible shadow. Beware its peak. So sharp it cuts the eye. Now, this is one of the more dreaded places I've gone through after death. I tend, I tend to hang out inside of death because some of these places are terrifying. Like this place. Now, into the grasping gullet of the earth. And descend into those infernal depths where the earth's f- feeded? Yeah. Feeded? Is that, does that mean like baby-like? No. Not, not fetus? God. Zach. What? I'm just making sure everyone here is on the same level as me. And if you guys don't understand these words, then what is the point of me teaching you anything? Anyway. That's fair. Just descend in those infernal depths where the earth's feeded breath boils the spirit, broils the spirit. That's flame from a top, uh, not in a case of water. That is only top-heavy flame, and you got to watch out for that. Because once you get into the gullet, top-down burn. Next slide, please. Now the guardians of what's on the earth side which is, to me, the thing to fear the most. It's not where, but the who. And you need, to, you need to beware of the vulture folk. Now, the hallowed horns foretell their coming. And it's written in at least six different books and what's, what's going to go on with these little vultured folk. Um, they, they sing a fine fiddle. They sing, they sing a fine tune, and they really let you know that you're doing everything incorrectly. And they actually wonder why you're there. There's no real answer for this, so it actually gets pretty frustrating. Then you get back into that forest thing. Next slide, please. Vulture folk. Now, this is not a game, people, and that's the thing. Some people are like, well, what if my arm starts dying? What if my heart starts dying? Is this a game? Can this be like a human operation? It's not a game, guys. First, you got to find the diary. Now, the account of the last days of the immortals revealing their secret magics, which allow them to spin the wheel and laugh. <laughs> Lout at God. <laughs> yeah. I was reading a lot of dark poetry when I was writing this. I had to get into the mindset. Uh, now, about the dead, guys. Once again, not a joke. Uh, a jealous and crafty people, the dead are. They're always seeking re-entry to the sunlands. Listen not to their song, beautiful though it may be. They're, they sing a song that sounds uh, something like, I want to sit in the sun. Uh, and they're allowed to, but they just keep asking if they can. And I'm like, you're allowed to go ahead. I don't know why you're singing this same old song. Uh, but the important thing to know is you're going to find a lot of creepy ass people after the land, after the land of the dead. Uh, and this is not a game, not a game. You can make it a game if you want to, but it's not automatically a game. Next slide, please. Whoa. Whoa. Now, should you find the diary? Your spirit can ascend anew to feel the sun's warm kiss upon thy flesh or else remain neath the earth, a specter twisted in jealous wrath against these who follow the immortal legacy. (sighs) (laughs) Need I say more? Next slide, please. I really, I, I have never said that in my entire life. Now remember that which you find precious. 
Time spent beneath the mountain cleaves. <laughs> and this is not for me. Time spent beneath the mountain cleaves thought for my identity as a butcher cleaves a lamb. And if you know my friend Cleave, he is not a very good butcher. And he's going to hack the shit out of this. <laughs> now, time spent under that mountain, it's going to hack the shit out of your identity. You're going to come back just a, a mauled and mangled creature. And just waiting to just sit on the beautiful, slightly oiled chest of a gold bloom. What's your gold bloom? That's what I need to know. My gold bloom? Jeff, next slide, please. In conclusion... A lot of things are going to happen with your body parts. We've went over a couple things. One, something's got to give. <laughs> Two, something's got to give, guys. Three, this is not a joke, but something's got to give. Now, here's some parts of a, of a gravestone that you're going to have to keep in mind when you're going to talk to the dead, when you're going to go out there uh, with your coopy little ghostly Tinder app trying to hook up with some dead people, or when you're trying to find those vulture clawed people and try to give them the last song that Dylan put on a cassette tape for some reason at all. The top of the, uh, the, top of the gravestone, that's the most important part. That's where you get the, the leaning shoulder. That's where you get the, the subtle hand as the as the the person's walking. I don't know, whatever, something. There's the sides. No one likes the sides, dude. No one ever talks about the sides of gravestones ever. There's not one song about the sides of gravestones. There is the crack, though. And that's how like, that's what lets you know shit's getting real. When there's a crack in the gravestone, you got bad marble, right? You got bad marble or bad foundation. Then there's the bottom. And that's the closest to the body which technically would be the top of you. So when the top is the bottom, the sides don't matter. You got to get that little crack in there. All in all, I'm not sure what any of this had to do with the cessation of vital functions, but God damn it, it's Halloween time and it's kooky season. So that's what I wanted to bring to you folks. Thank you very much. I really appreciate all of your time and attention on this. Uh, vital, vital functions. I will take any questions if they pertain to my slides only. No attacks at my personal character, Michael Colby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michael Colby. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I just I just would like to go back to, I think it was the third slide. Mm, that was my favorite one. Yes. Uh, you were having a, a very hard time uh, with the one word on this slide. Mm -hmm. um, and I would like you to keep trying at it until you actually um, get the word correct. Yeah. Easy. Feeded. Fetted. Hey, you got it. Hey, great it job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah. Now, for those who don't know, this is actually what you call a tiny pig. <laughs> fetid. Any other questions? Uh, big Mikey. Um, if, if, if we could, uh, circle back to the guardians, um, oh, yeah. I know we have a silhouette, oh. uh, on display. Could you perhaps go into further detail about what, uh, we should be expecting to see, um, you know, where are they more vulture? Where are they more folk? Um, yeah. I just, Yeah. No, very good question. Thank you very much. See, the, the thing is, I, I wanted to use a silhouette because the actual image is terrifying, really. Um, these aren't wings. And and that's one of the things I was hoping somebody would talk to me about is it, it's actually just ripped up uh, uh, Hot Topics t-shirts that are getting just blown back by everyone's just distaste of, of their fashion sense. Uh, at the bottom here are some really just raggedy old Jinkos. So these are some 90s kids that just hang out uh, under an overpass. They let their fingernails grow long because they used to paint them, but now they just really don't care. So what they could do is they could take their, their feet claws and they can grab any of your Twinkies or any kind of uh, candied goods or snackables, really, uh, that are within the area. And uh, they really make you feel bad about it, but they put it in form of like a like a riddle. So you feel like an idiot. So it's pretty terrifying. Haunting. Thank you. Really haunting. And just and it's it's the lack of facial hair that makes it all bad because it's like you guys have been out here for years. How are you so clean shaven with everything else going? It doesn't matter. Um, Dylan Terry, um, thank you for the presentation. If we could go You're back welcome. to the prior slide, oh yeah, uh, with the three entries on it. Yes, this one. Oh god, <laughs> what does a small pig breath have to do with descending into <laughs> infernal depths? What kind of question is that, my friend? 
Do I need to read you this entire thing again? Now, listen, when you descend into those <laughs> infernal depths where mm -hmm. the earth's pig baby breath mm -hmm. boils the spirits, does that, does that not sound terrifying to you? Is it, is it boils or broils? Because you made a very specific point of it being a top-down heat previously. It, it what does that have both? to do with the pig breath? Pig breath. The pig breath? The baby pig breath? <laughs> yes. It's hot, dude. Okay. It's hot from top down. It's okay. like trickle-down economics of heat mm -hmm. and terror. You don't want any of that stuff down there. Like, okay. think of when you go to those crappy weddings and there's like the champagne flute and it's just spilling everywhere, right? That's top down. That's broiling some party with champagne. Now, imagine that pig breath. <laughs> okay, I think I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I knew you'd like that one. <laughs> what is a feeded, by the way? <laughs> fetid. Fetid? It's kind of <laughs> rotting smelling. Oh, okay. Sure. Like, 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 moist. like putrid? You... Yeah, you wrote Richard. the slides, Zach. Yeah. Listen, buddy, I write a bunch of stuff, and I'm quick, and my typo fixes everything <laughs> perfectly. Uh, I, I I have this special program that really just makes sure it knows what I'm trying to say <laughs> instead of what I want to say. And it thought, <clears throat> big breath, not good enough. Listen, I appreciate everyone's questions. I really hope you learned something today. Eleni back. Hey, oh. Okay, let's see. Up next. Wait, you said no no more dues? No more dues. Okay, up next we have Mr. Michael. Big Mikey E back, and let's see if we can get the producers of. Oh, here we go. Take it away, Mikey. Uh, so before we do get started into my presentation, if I could please have everybody uh, in the audience raise their hand, raise it up high, please. Up high, fantastic. All right, so I'll have everybody look to the person to their left and look to the person to their right. Now, all of you have your hands raised. Uh, every single person in here with their hands raised is going to have a life-changing experience in the coming moments. Uh, all of you will be leaving this presentation a different person than you were going into it. Um, your brothers, your sisters, lovers, perhaps. Uh, but you can go ahead and put your hands down and we can jump on into it now. What's death? A cessation of vital functions. Next slide, please. Definition of concepts. Number one, cessation. Shit stops, friend. That's the end. Cessation. It's ceased. It's done. But we're still friends about it. Number two, of. <laughs> Something shit possesses, amigo. We're getting real here. We need to dissect every single bit of this topic to really understand it. To understand that shit's getting real, but we're still friends about it. <clears throat> Number three, vital. Shit is necessary, yo. Shit is necessary. When it is vital, it's necessary. You need this to be alive. Number four, function. Shit works, buddy. Because shit just works. At the end of the day, when you've got vital things functioning, you're alive. When you have a secession of shit stopping, of shit being possessed, vital, necessary things, functions, shit works, it doesn't. But we're still friends about it. We, we still need to have that connection to understand this. Next slide, please. A brief history of death. <laughs> so as you can see here... <clears throat> Uh, these are some images I had my neighbors pose for this picture here. We have Denisova, uh, who were, lives just kitty corner. And you have standing right here, Denisova. Um, I mean, death is all around us. A brief history of it. It, 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 it can't be brief because it's always been. Does that make sense? Denisova has experienced it because Denisova's great-great-grandparents, dead. Great-great-great-grandparents, dead. And it continues to go as we look further back. I don't think that's a coincidence because if we look at my other neighbor, Neanderthal, who lives just across the street and makes fantastic tarts. Great-great-aunt and uncles. I checked and I had to double check. I, I did my research dead. It, it can't be any more brief than that. 
because if we go any further, it's no longer brief. And the H. Sapiens, it's a huge family in one of those tiny homes where it's it's like, wow, you have that many people living in that. Like it's it's you know, it's it's kind of mind blowing when you see it. Um, they're nice people, nice enough. Uh, but again, if we're looking back and we keep going, I I cannot stress this enough. Dead. Their ancestors are not here. They've experienced a cessation of vital functions, just as the Neanderthals did, just as Denisova did. And it's 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 a brief history, but it's not brief enough. Next slide, please. This is a quote, words full of wisdom about death. That someone important said and can make the reader get inspired. Mm. Does anybody here have any idea who said that? No. Someone famous did. Someone famous said those words. Dang. It's, it's, it just goes to show the influence and the impact that this has had. I mean, even back when someone famous was saying things... They were saying these things about the cessation of vital functions. Next slide, please. Turtles. You love them. You hate them. Nobody's indifferent. They live life to the fullest. So be like the turtles and make sure to live, laugh, and love. If you go to your local craft store or anywhere that, that they sell signs, house signs, you're going to find live, laugh, love. And who made those signs? It always says, if you look, made by your local turtles in some form or another. Sometimes they phrase it a bit differently, but that's the general census is that the turtles in your local area created these signs. I mean, turtles live for so long, as we can see here, their eggs in the ground. And then they get out. They're pushed out. So they pop their heads out of those eggshells and they're walking around. Right. But they're walking around. Maybe they're rolling around a bit because their arms are kind of stubby. They're babies. So they get dirty. And, and, and so their shells get a bit darker and everything there and, and a little more cracked, so as you can see. But they do get bigger. So eventually it, it's able to be a bit more protective. And then, and then their buddy introduces them to Marvin Gaye and it's over right there. I mean, they, they, they've kind of blossomed, you know, they, they're, they're, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a classic coming of age story where the turtles get into that kind of music when the mood hits and they're just discovering themselves and each other. And what happens? It all comes crashing down. So they dig a little hole to hide away in. But you know what? They say to themselves, I've lived, I've laughed. And as you can see in that last image, I've loved. And I can't let the cessation of vital functions be the end of this adventure. So I'm going to pop out some baby turtles and we're going to keep on living, laughing, and loving. Next slide, please. How to death others. <clears throat> Simple stuff here. Elementary. Everybody should know this stuff. Number one, whack stuff. Hit it. Hit it hard. Use a gauntlet. Those things are really going to do some damage. Number two, stab stuff. Poke it. Things are easy to poke. So just do it and you can death other people. Number three, armor. Now, this is a bit of a, a, a curveball here because this one, you're wearing it to stop you from having death put on you. Put on armor so death isn't put on you. Number four, stomp stuff. Bash it. We were just talking about turtles. And who loves bashing turtles? Mario. Next slide, please. Who's died in history? We've We've covered this a bit. Um, Nefertiti, she was a pharaoh, I think. But you know what she absolutely is, indisputably is? Dead. Almost every dog 
<laughs> Let me tell you, that's a lot of pooch. <laughs> Next slide, please. <laughs> In conclusion, the turtle is the absolute best representation of the cessation of vital functions because they live, they laugh, they love, they go to town. We've all seen the video. I'm not pretending like I haven't. They continue. The cessation of vital functions lives in us all, dies in us all. But if we look at the turtles, we don't let it be the death of us as a whole. Thank you. I'd love to open the floor if anyone has any questions. Yeah. Before we get to the panel, though, we do have a question from the audience that I have to sure. address real quick. Uh, Darl's Chicken's like, no, I kissed my first love by a lake in England. We were 16. Then a UFO appeared and sucked her into a flying saucer. Sure. I don't miss her, though. I have a new girlfriend now. Is the old bird still alive? Now that has, that, that'll that happen. Um... But there's a follow-up real quick before you oh, answer. Oh, sure, sure. I never poked her. The aliens took her. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so um, um I guess I guess is the old bird alive? Okay. Yes and no. Oh. Yes. Okay. Well, let me start with no mm -hmm. because the old birds experienced a cessation of vital functions. Oh yeah. Yes, because we're still talking about her. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, also, Blue Shoe Nick would like to know, is Desanova going barefoot in the snow? I would be over that too. True, mm. fair, yeah. Um, Real turd. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's really a fantastic question if we look back at Desanova's um, lineage. Uh, being barefoot in the snow is what caused a lot of cessation of vital functions in, in you know the the ancestry mm -hmm. um but it, it desanova also kind of comes from a bloodline that likes to to stare the the cessation of vital functions in the face and say yeah. i won't be shooed <laughs> keep these crocticles to yourself <laughs> perfect thank you very much Okay, um, uh, Nick Frostbite. If we can go back to slide number two, please. Uh, sure. First off, I've, I'm sheerly impressed uh, with the amount of slang that you know for friend. Uh, it's impressive. Sure. But <clears throat> in my slide, uh, I was very quick to let people know that shit starts at death. That's when the bowels will empty themselves. And it seems like number one here is that shit stops, sure. which is just opposed to what I was saying. It's all about perspective. Okay. One person's start is another person's stop. Uh, it's a lot like, are you familiar with the, um, the, the, the old ditty closing time? No. Okay. So have you seen star Wars? No. All right. <laughs> Sometimes things start, but also stop. Oh, is my point. Okay. <laughs> I'll I'll, ac I'll accept that. Thank sure. you. Sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, Michael slash Colby. Uh, yes. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I was just wondering. Um, you were talking about armor. Um, of course in one of your now what do you do if the person that you were trying to death um, is wearing armor and you are not is there any way to death them um, mm. while they're wearing armor so or are you the... just going to get death hmm. Hmm. very good question great question fantastic question uh, it works in, almost as a math equation um, as you can see, armor is number three here. Uh, however, you can stomp them because four is greater. Mm. If you're stomping, that does outdo the armor. Uh, it's a little harder to stomp sometimes depending on the height of, of the recipient of the death. Um, 
it, you know, if you want to poke, if you want to stab stuff, you might have to give it a couple goes. Uh, you're going to have to give it a few hits uh, as well. Um, so it really just depends on um, how determined you are versus, versus your opponent. Um, our, our armor helps, but certainly doesn't, um, it doesn't stop the cessation. Okay. Thank you. If that answers your question. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh. All right. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I was muted. There we uh, go. Lewis Dunn, like, no, I see the live and I see the love of the turtles. Uh, ew. But which one is laughing? If we could bring that turtle slide back up real fast, Dylan, if that's okay. So said something about the turtle's nut, which feels a little... Uh... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to pretend it's a typo. I can oh, understand our community oh, here. Oh, okay. So, yeah, obviously we can see that the one uh, all the way to the left is probably living. Right, sure. we see the one bottom right is loving. Which one of these is the laugh? Which I mean, I would almost argue that um, the one that has that depicts the two turtles is the laugh. Oh, that one. Okay, because, perfect. Yeah, you know what? What is that experience without a little joyous laughter? Well done. Well done, my friend. Okay, excellent. Uh, Dylan texted me that we have an ado, but I'm just going to leave him on red and let's get that going. So I think, uh, who who was next? I didn't see who was next here. Is it is it Dylan? Are you next, my friend? Sure. Dylan's next? All right. Yeah, I'll go. Uh, I'm going to talk right now about the cessation of vital functions of biological life. It's my heroic story of overcoming dead body parts to learn how to actually be alive. Uh, not just to live, but not just to survive, to be alive. Uh, now, the question, of course, is what does that mean? And I think maybe over the course of this presentation, we're going to figure out exactly what that means. Let's go to the next slide, please. Now, Wikipedia says death is the irreversible cessation of all biological functions that sustain an organism. It can also be defined as the irreversible cessation of functioning of the whole brain. But, of course, I like to think that death also involves the uh, irreversible cessation of functioning of the whole heart. So if you really don't feel anything... Uh, I would say you're dead in a different way than maybe just biological. Uh, now, of course, we are talking about cessation of vital functions in biological beings. So biological functions are by the process of, uh, you know, just context, probably the most important. Uh, but I think we can take Wikipedia at its word here and assume that if the brain doesn't function, neither does the life of the person in which the brain is that's not functioning anymore. Let's go to the next slide, please. We've got some types of death to talk about. <clears throat> We've got the irreversible cessation of circulatory and respiratory functions. That means that you don't breathe and you don't have blood moving in circles around inside your body. Uh, blood moves in circles around inside your body sometimes, and that's what makes you live. So if that stops or if this like blood starts moving in like squares or something like that or backwards even, sometimes you stop living. The cessation of your vital functions has begun. Uh, now, it could talk about the irreversible cessation of all functions of the entire brain. Uh, as we can demonstrate with certain members of this panel, that may have already taken grip. And, of course, we're talking about social death. When you make enough jokes at the expense of others, sometimes they don't respond to anything you say, and you've been ostracized from your social group. And they say that you uh, die twice sometimes. First, when you, all of your vital, vital signs or functions cessate or cease, and once when all of your social functions cease. And then a third time when nobody remembers you, but that doesn't fit with the theme of the topic. So I wasn't <laughs> going to mention it. <clears throat> Except as a perfunctory footnote at the end of this slide. But let's go to the next slide, please. I've got upwards of two stories of parts of me dying. Now, of course, the presentation is about how I overcame dead body parts in order to feel truly alive. Now, my first death story goes uh, somewhat like this. There was one time I was at an abandoned Bennigan's. I poured some DIY DMT into my chai tea, thinking it was spirulina. It was not, of course. Uh, and 6,000 years later, I woke up in the parking lot of that Bennigan's 15 seconds later, having met God and found that uh, God was quite disappointed in several decisions I had made. But 
saw fit enough to return vital functions to my body so that I could wake up in the parking lot instead of in the restaurant where, of course, I would have embarrassed myself. <clears throat> and my second death story, while hitchhiking, I borrowed, hence the quotation marks in my name today, some rat poison from a chain wallet that I was told was aspartame for an on-the-road cheesecake recipe I found. Uh, I do enjoy in a previous life, and I'm speaking metaphorically, uh, because though I have had dead body parts, I have not fully died yet. So when I say a previous life, it's all figurative. Uh, I enjoyed the concept of cooking on the dashboard of my car. I grew up in Tucson, Arizona, uh, where the temperature would regularly reach 125 degrees just in the open air. And when you leave the windows up in your car, that would increase the temperature in your car to upwards of 175, maybe 200 degrees Fahrenheit. As such, it was entirely possible to cook an entire uh, intercontinental breakfast on the dashboard of your car, intercontinental being a continental breakfast that includes heated elements, um, eggs, bacon, pancakes. Um, and I was struck with the idea of making the perfect dashboard cheesecake with no cracks. And I tried recipe after recipe after recipe. And of course, the struggle with making cheesecake, even in a proper environment with an oven, <clears throat> where you can hydrate it properly with a little mist bottle and you do that whole thing. Uh, the issue is that it will crack as it expands and then it mars the surface. And it's very difficult to hydrate the interior of a car when you're trying to bake on the dashboard. Um, so I thought maybe it's all of the microorganisms inside the cheesecake that are making it expand, or at least the microorganisms in my car because I don't clean it. Um, and so I was told it was aspartame, which of course is a painkiller. Um, in my adult state from the DMT, I was unable to determine that it was not rat poison. And so, uh, yeah, I think those elements probably go together in your mind better than I can outline them right now in this topic. So I'm going to let you think over that. Um, yeah, you'll learn a lesson sometimes uh, with your near-death experiences. Let's go to the next slide, please. Here's some lines. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, we have vital lines. We have a death line and a deather line. We have non-vital lines with a death line and then a deathest line. Um, it, of course, we are going to be measuring the death scale from death, deather to deathest, from your head, shoulders, knees, toes, knees, and toes. Um, of course, these are assuming centaurs. Um, I did study centaur physiology in college, and so most of my data was collected from the specimens I was, I was able to procure. Uh, and you'll see vital signs for these centaurs. Pretty good on average. The death line is only in the head. Death are in the shoulders and knees. It's because they're very active and so they wear down more. The non-vital signs you find primarily in the toes, knees, and toes. Uh, toes are the proper terminology despite the fact that taxonom taxonomically they come from hooves, but that's beyond the scope of this presentation. Uh, non-vital signs were very solid black. Death and deathist, uh, there's no overlap between any of these, of course, um, but you'll see that the knees and toes were far more deathy than just the toes. So toes are death, knees and toes are deathest. Uh, those are separate samples of toes. Those are separate samples of knees. Um, again, I am not a scientist. I cook food in my car, so I don't really know how to put together a chart. Let's go to the next slide, please. Here's a stool chart. You know, you know what this is. Uh, it's the type seven types of stools. Um, now, in the medical profession, everything comes down to poo. Uh, oftentimes they can diagnose death by the type of poo that is in your pants after you die. I mean, we talk, I, of course, our, our, uh, keynote speaker, Nick Frostbite spoke about, uh, avoiding your bowels when you die. And so oftentimes the best way to figure out how you died is for a scientist to go in and just be like, that's a type five clear cut edges. He was stabbed to death. <laughs> Let's go to the next slide, please. Now, these are tests I do on body, dead body parts to make sure they're not playing. Uh, I did several different methodologies. I poked, I prodded, I pushed, I punched, and I puttered. Uh, I did this on dead, not dead, almost dead, and playing. <laughs> um, th those are the categories in which I separated the results, of course. Um, these are just tested on body parts. I don't think that the specific body parts tested on is necessary, considering it's all a body and really, like, what's the difference between your hand and your foot or your hand and your shoulder? Like, come on, I'm not a scientist. Uh, but when you poke the dead, yep, that's dead. When you poke the not dead, not dead. Almost dead, good enough. Playing, absolutely not. 
I'm not going to run down these results entirely for you because I don't know that we have time for this, but you'll see that the red X is generally mean didn't work out. And the white check marks mean, eh, sure. Why not? Uh, so I'm, we're going to take a moment. Uh, you can see that <clears throat> in general, puttering was effective in, or not effective, my mistake in uh, determining the majority of these states. So I would not recommend that you putter at things to determine if they're alive or not. Puttering doesn't seem like 75% chance of failure. Yeah. Let's go to the next slide. Let's get out of here. <clears throat> now in conclusion, and by conclusion, I do mean death. Uh, you know, you grow, you mutate. Uh, we got a pig in there. We talked about pig breath earlier. Um, mm. A lot of links between Zach's presentation and mine. Life's been around for a long time. If you don't stop every once in a while and take a look at it, you get smacked by a bus and fucking die. And then your vital functions will cease. You'll find yourself beneath a mountain? Fighting off vulture people? Diary? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Then, uh, you know, make like the turtles and get fucking. <laughs> get to live laughing loving. That's right. Beautiful. Yeah. <clears throat> that's gonna that's gonna just like my vital functions my presentation has ceased <laughs> beautiful beautiful i'll take any questions from the audience or the panel uh let's hear from nick frostbite and that was one of the most well-crafted presentations i've heard in such a long time oh, uh, but i did have yourself. a uh, i will uh now it, it, we can talk about this line for a second now it does well, seem when you try to push it was the only one that was playing. Would you mind yeah. going over that specific event? <laughs> uh, yes. So it was a dead body, or at least I was going to test if it was a dead body or not. I had my lab assistants uh, go out into the world and find what they could find. And I walked up and I pushed it. And it, the <laughs> body said, hey, stop it. I'm like, oh, you're playing. All right, cool. <laughs> Data. Click. <clears throat> Uh, Dahl Shiggins says, I can't imagine him doing it though. So that's doing nice. what it, um, it? Oh. he also oh. said, asked is poking the dead legal. It depends on the jurisdiction. That's fair. <laughs> uh, Lewis comma Delaware says 37 at 37, 18, Michael Colby yawns. I'm not I here. For how do you feel about that? Yeah. You there don't really was want to way mess more times than that. They were not clocking all of my yawns. There was a lot of messages. I didn't feel like putting them all up here. In, in the immortal words of the musician pink, I'm not here for your entertainment. You don't really want to mess with me tonight. <laughs> you do quote pink way more often than anyone would think. <laughs> uh, we do have another question from the audience. Uh, to, uh, I had a dream that I died because of a nasal smell, but I woke up with my ex-girlfriend knickers. And okay. Really? Nasal that's smells. Just, you smell from just, anywhere else? That's just low level, <laughs> really low brow humor here. Uh, I cop with a I cop with a brass in a sleazy hotel room in Manchester, but she took one look at me and legged it with my money. Would you like to elaborate on that, Dylan? Me? <laughs> it is your presentation. Uh, yes, I was the brass, and I legged it with his money. <laughs> well, that is nice. Uh, I think Michael Colby has a question. <laughs> yes, Michael uh, slash Colby. I do. I have another question. It's also about this mm. uh, this particular slide. Mm -hmm. um, you said that this was scientific. I just wanted to know your sample size for each of these types of, mm. you know, how many dead people did you have? How many not dead people did you have? Good question. Uh, I was blindfolded during these tests, <laughs> um, but at least three. <clears throat> um and I could tell because at least one of them was not human. And one of them was very wrinkly. That was planned. Uh, inconclusive on that one, actually. <laughs> that Excellent. Any more questions for Mr. Dylan? Terry. Perfect. Excellent job, my friend. As always, this is one of the few reasons that I keep you on here. Mm -hmm. Other than you pay for it. So that's nice. Uh, yeah. Okay. Up, <laughs> uh, up last, finally, crowd-pleasing Michael Colby. Uh, thank you, Zach. Uh, Nick Frostbite. Um, I know I give you a lot of shit for you do. not being funny, but you're proving me wrong today. Um, now, my presentation is uh, on how sometimes body parts die. 
Uh, there's nothing I can do about that, but uh, I can give you some good news about them. Um, body parts, uh, they die. And this is a presentation about those parts and how, why, and when they die. Hopefully that's what this is about. Next slide, please. <laughs> My favorite body parts that die. Um, there are parts in our bodies that we absolutely don't need. Um, it seems like whoever designed our body did a fucking terrible job. Um, there's a lot of extra parts that are only in there for to hurt us. Uh, they don't do us any good. They're just here to hurt us. Uh, like your appendix. There's no, there's literally no problem. There's literally no reason for it except to kill you. Um, the appendix was put in the body by God as sort of a, a time bomb. Um, and some people uh, just, it, it goes off in them and then they're just dead. Uh, the wisdom teeth. Uh, I'm, I ain't no shark. Why do I have extra teeth? Also, those teeth can break other teeth when they come in they can break themselves get infected go into your bloodstream and kill you like your fucking teeth can kill you why do we have those extra teeth get rid of them god um the coccyx look i don't know if this actually dies but i do know that we don't need it it it, it was for when we had tails we don't have tails anymore. Either give us back our tails, God, or get rid of that bone that does nothing except for hurt us if we fall onto it. Now, we have this thing called the erector pili muscle. Uh, you do know what? You, you do know? No? You know? Well, I just Googled it, so I know exactly what it is. Um, I'm going to tell you to also Google it because um, I don't have time. It's it's very complicated. Um, I had to read it four to six times before I understood what I was talking about. So I'm not going to babysit you and tell you what it is. So why don't you Google the erector pili muscle? Uh, next slide, please. In death, there's also profit. Now, I know what you're thinking. Can you sell dead organs or body parts? Why don't you tell me? I didn't have time to Google it. Like, <laughs> literally, let me know. I have a lot of dead body parts. I have six in my head alone. Um, I'm not going to tell you what, what ones they are, but there's a lot of them. Um, the amount of claustral parts I have is vexing. Uh I have a lot of dead body parts. I do have a story about buying one coccyx. Allow me to humor myself with this tale. <laughs> Get it? That was a joke about a, co a coccyx. It's coccyx comedy. Anyway, the story is I was at a hobby lobby and I said, I, I said, I'm looking for a, a, a more realistic looking skeleton um, to put out in my front yard uh, for Halloween. And the lady who was working there said, these are the only skeletons we have. They're made out of styrofoam with cheap plastic on the outside. And we charge $130 for them. And I said, that's too much. Can I buy this giant pair of shears? So I bought the shears. They cost me $7. I was able to find someone passed out in their car in the parking lot. And I removed their coccyx myself. Um, I went through. I didn't kill anyone. <laughs> but I did collect enough bones to make myself an entire life-size human skeleton. Just by buying the one pair of $7 shears. So what I'm saying is you don't need to spend that much money at Hobby Lobby to get a cheap, crappy looking skeleton. You can build your own. You just have to put in the time. Next slide, please. Oh, that reminds me. 
of this other coccyx I bought. <laughs> now, trust me, l- l- look, you won't believe this one. Anywho, <laughs> guess what this slide was supposed to be before I remembered that wild story. I'm going to ask you to all guess after my presentation's over, because right now I need to tell you this story. I put my human skeleton out in my front yard and it went fine. Um, The cops showed up a couple times, but they were never able to, you know, get anything solid on me. So uh, I just said it was a realistic looking skeleton. Um, But one of the kids that lives down the street from me that at one point in time um, stole about 50 PlayStation three games from me. Um, it was the same kids who came and all they wanted, all they took from my skeleton was the coccyx. And later when I found them, I said, why did you take the coccyx? And they said, <laughs> because of the name it's funny we made it a necklace but then we lost that when we were diving off the cliff into the uh into the quarry it stupid kid stupid kid stuff um so i had to buy one on the internet on the dark web do you know how hard it is to buy human bones and other body parts on the Mm -hmm. dark web no it's not hard but it's expensive Mm -hmm. it's so expensive like by that Mm -hmm. point i had broken my shears because to get a spinal column out of a human does a lot of damage to your shears so i didn't have time or the money to buy uh, another pair of shears at hobby lobby so i had to go online and pay a whole bunch of bitcoin to get a new coccyx uh and it barely even fit i had to like trim it. it it was a whole thing but anyway let we'll get back um i'm gonna let you all guess what this slide was supposed to be but i had to tell you that story because i just remembered it and those fucking kids in my neighborhood i'm so tired of them just coming up onto my property and stealing my stuff like those playstation games were in a fire i was airing them out and all of a sudden they're all gone what the fuck Anyway, next slide, please. You want to know more parts that we don't need? Um, There's a lot of them here. Um, These are all hilariously named uh, parts of the body. Um, the, the, The like some people don't even have these parts. Um, Some of them only are in elves and one of them uh, makes you cry so much that uh, it, it looks like there's a like there's a towel hanging out of your eye. Um, it's it, they're all bad, um, but we don't need them. A lot of times we don't have them. These ones, though, if they die, it doesn't matter. Um, they're not going to cause an infection or or any sort of time bomb death like the previous ones did. So I'm not even going to waste any time on them. Uh, Mm. Next slide, please. Now, why am I telling you about these parts? Because sometimes in life, shit needs to die. And sometimes it's not your full time. Like it's not your time to shuffle off this mortal coil. Uh, Sometimes death just wants a little bit of you. So sometimes death's just going to take a part off of you. Um, And then sometimes the cemetery near where you grew up, um, people had all sorts of body parts buried next to them. And it was pretty cool. And you would go there and you would take pictures of them. You would laugh at them. And like you were real shithead kids. Uh, (laughs) But it didn't matter because those people lived for years after their body parts. Um, But death just wanted, you know, maybe death wanted your hand because maybe sometimes death is tired of jacking himself off and he wants a new hand to do it with. Um, Sometimes he takes two feet off of someone because he's tired of 
jerking himself off and he wants a foot job. Um, sometimes he'll take off someone's lips um, because he's tired of jacking himself off and he wants a blow job. Um, and he can't feel live body parts. So he'll take parts off so that he can feel the dead parts on his uh, skeleton boner. It's complicated. Next slide, please. Would you like a graph? I know you want a graph. You fucking freaks. You love your graphs on this show. So I'm going to show you a graph. It doesn't mean anything. These uh, I completely made up all of these statistics, but I wanted to give you a graph because you love them. You're you're horny for graphs, uh, just like just like the Grim Reaper is horny for people's feet. Um, now, so here you go, you freaks. Look at the graph. We got hands, we got noses, we got motorcycle parts. Um, there's a bunch of bars with numbers that mean stuff. There you go. See, you love it. Everyone, did you get a screenshot of this? Oh, yeah, baby. We'll come back to it. But for now, I'm going to go to the next slide. Now, in conclusion. Mm. <laughs> in conclusion. Sometimes you have sometimes you have parts of you that die. Sometimes those parts are dead inside of you. Um, this is actually a microscope shot of a bunch of gallstones. Um, they're in your body, but they're not really alive. Um, they taste terrible. Um, they look stupid. And uh, they shouldn't exist. But because God did such a terrible job designing our stupid human bodies, our weak, susceptible to damage and death human bodies that just have parts in them that don't do anything except kill you. He made these evil triangles that grow inside of your body and then come out of your urethra. Like, why would he do that? These things are disgusting. That's where these things come from. You don't know that, but that's what they are. They're, they're gallstones. Terrible. Um, that's going to do it for my presentation. Basically, basically you don't need to die completely to have a part <coughs> of you die. So, um, are there any questions? Yes. Uh, Dylan, Terry. Thank you for getting it correct. Um, and thank you for the presentation. I was wondering if we could go to, I believe it was slide two. Uh, yes. How could you suggest that I erect her Peely when I hardly know her? We almost got a whole show. <laughs> we almost got a whole, almost got a whole show without Bill and Terry. <laughs> One of these A words. Did he leave? He just yeah, left. he'll be back. He's probably cleaning up his cat vomit. AK's <laughs> <laughs> <A.K.'s> presentation. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Good answer. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, Big Mikey. Uh, so I know at the time it was more cost effective for you to just buy a coccyx from the dark web rather than just buy another pair of shears. Uh, but it sounded originally like a like a, a, a pretty solid investment. <clears throat> Have you purchased another pair of shears since this um, ordeal? Oh, yes. Um, okay. The Hobby Lobby near me has since gone out of business. Mm. Um, and they had a 75% off sale. I bought all of their shears. Um, luckily at the time when I was missing that coccyx, um, the Bitcoin that I bought for seven cents was up to $43,000. Yes. Um, it was that way for about 17 minutes. And that's when I was able to, to sure. buy that coccyx. 
it went back down to 23 cents after that um almost immediately so i basically got i basically only spent about seven cents to get that coccyx uh i'm sure there were better uses for it um to get you know to turn into real money or something but when you don't have seven dollars but you do have one bitcoin worth forty three thousand dollars for a couple minutes you buy your coccyx with that oh it's just good business yeah yeah Yeah. Mm. but but yes now i do have 73 pairs of shears gotcha uh question in the comments um lewis delaware would like to know l or light what do you prefer I, I I don't understand hmm. the question. L or light? Wh- what is that pertaining to? I mean, I don't. I have no idea. Unexpected. Uh, I, that was a little weird, but <laughs> yeah. Can we? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna skip that question <laughs> because I don't have an answer for it. You've never seen Death Note? No. No. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Okay, well, that was actually the mo- the majority of my questions as well was on Death Note. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I'm in if, question if time give, now. If so you I give me an hour, one. I'll watch the first episode of Death Note and the last episode of Death Note, and then I will know everything <laughs> that happened in Death Note. Hey, Just watch, out... watch the live action Netflix adaptation. It's pretty cool. No, watch... <laughs> I can watch the live action one too. Uh, Michael, we we do we do have some rather interesting comments. <laughs> Uh, in the chat. I don't know if you want to discuss them or not. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're, they're a shad and Selly, um, but if you'd like, I can bring them up here and you can discuss them. Oh, please do. Okay, excellent. Well, they are all from Darl's Chicken. Um, <laughs> all, all of them. Um, and, well, the first one is my bone may as well be dead. It gets zero action. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I probably should reread it. My bone may as well be dead. It gets zero action. Okay. That's well, a question. can I have it? Yeah. Like women? Like this guy's, women. This, this guy's what's, like, what's like women? I'm not sure exactly when they wrote that, but I'm pretty sure. Pretty close. Was. Yeah. He never gets tired of that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to buy my cox. It's I got one free with my burger at McDonald's. Oh, well, that was lucky. Mm-hmm. I never find anything good. Uh, Lexi Bell, excellent foot jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Check Jesus. browsers. The, the I, I'm assuming that that means something about that Grim Reaper foot job. Again, the Grim Reaper can't feel his own he has to have dead body parts Mm. so unless he's going to cut off this lexi bell who i've never heard of i have no idea um what you're talking about as far as lexi bell goes um he would have to cut off her feet which would be um a catastrophe Uh, that would be uh, that would be worthy of a um National Day of Mourning for mm. Lexi Bell's feet. You know, when um, I started this, I even did not though think I, you two will be friends, I was I, that was I not the not... intent of this of this bit. <laughs> Great, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna cut Michael Colby off from answering questions because he doesn't need any more friends, especially <laughs> those kind. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that has been our presentation. Uh, I had some adus, but I lost them. I think my tablet died. So let's see here. Uh, oh, now, I just sent all, I just sent you all of the adus. Well, I don't check my emails, especially from you, because then you just I like how you respond to me in the chats where I'm like, hey, Michael, do you want to get lunch? And you're like, respond to my fucking email. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, my now, emails are all about going out to lunch and you don't no. respond to them. Oh, OK, well, I guess I should open them. Then. Listen, guys, uh, all I'm an presenta- old man. I don't know how to use like we are other the same, things. Michael I Colby, just we're the same my, age. You I just, just look way AOL. older for some reason. <laughs> And now you're actually a little bit older. Am I? Yeah. I'm... I've, I've looked like this since I was about 25 years old. That Just so you know. So sad. <laughs> so, so sad. 
And now, with all the presentations given, each member of the panel will indicate uh, which speaker they believe deserves to win the $50,000 grant awarded by and from some nobody's Patreon account and the university, which is the only Patreon member, uh, and the Collector's Nostalgia Prize, which once again is a... I think Michael Colby said it was a V-Jazzled uh, Duncan Jojo. Um, yeah. The Jazzled Jojo. <laughs> So, will each member, uh, panel member, please choose a presentation and vote with your fingers. I'm one. Big Mikey's two. Dylan's three. Michael Colby's four. Tell me who wins in three, two, one. Oh, Big Mikey takes the cake this time. Hey. Excellent. Good job, Michael Eback. Uh, awesome, awesome job. Uh, really appreciate it. You are an expert in this very niche category, but very happy that you're here. Yeah, it, it does feel like the deck was stacked against us, though, because you did find the world's foremost expert on this subject mm -hmm. yeah i mean a lot of people are saying that like we have some information but we need to up our game uh so i thought that if we had smarter people on here um less loud people that we would really learn a thing or three so <laughs> what are you uh, talking about okay we don't need that take your teeth put your teeth back in uh <laughs> Uh, all right, let's see. That concludes our conference for the week. Now, Mr. Michael Eback, please, as the winner, you get to you get to decide what our conference is for next week. So what is our conference next week going to be? Oh, that is a great question. Um, uh... <laughs> it's like it's an improv show or something. It yeah, it's like... It's, it's... <laughs> You can literally say anything. Just look at something about, in your house. <laughs> you got a great speaker about the cessation of, of life, but not a very good improviser. Yeah, he knows stuff. He's not a comedian. I'm going to say, yeah, that, that, that's exactly <laughs> right. We're going to say um, <laughs> the pen industry. All right. The pen industry. The pen industry, not just <laughs> pens, but the industry the industry of the pen yeah okay well tune in next week we're going to go over the industry of the pen i'll be searching far and wide for pen experts especially the industry of uh mr eback will you please tell everybody where they can hear your voice see your face or maybe even touch your hair if they're close to you oh yes um yeah all, all over the place you can catch me at m a's excellent adventures another comedy improv show uh podcast we are on youtube as well um visual comedy in there uh yeah and and also it, you can give us some shout outs or anything uh, or if you want to be a part of the show or anything like that, Michael and Anthony adventures at gmail.com. It's probably the longest email address of all time, but Michael and Anthony adventures at gmail.com. And we love to uh, interact with people on there. It's actually the second longest email. Uh, Jack Billings presents. I love this terrible games haunted complex at gmail.com is actually a pretty lengthy one. Holy yeah. crap. But luckily my predictive Beautiful. text just throws it in there. So I don't have to worry about it. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. So if you want to find Michael E back and all his, uh, his, all his funnies, you can see his, the links in the show notes, check them out. M and T adventures, M and T M and a M and a M and a. Yeah. M and a. Nice. You're thinking Anthony, of the bank, yeah. Zach. What's that? <laughs> You're thinking of the bank. It closed. Guarantee. Yeah, we're bank. We've been told that we're very bank like, mm. but um, yeah, so I can understand the confusion. So go check out Thanks. Michael's. Go check out Michael's Thanks, uh, comedy com improv com com uh, yeah. podcast. They're basically the same thing. <sighs> Dylan's Dylan's like we've been going over nine minutes now. We're over time. I have to go to bed. I have a job. That old Texas D and D group back. They're gonna get, throw me some down fums. I don't like those down fums. Uh, okay, everybody. Uh, his name is Dylan Terry. You can find him everywhere. Some nobodies has words uh, or sounds. You can also find him on Twitter at Vorpal Words, uh, where there are more words, less sounds. Uh, yeah. Michael Colby, anything you want to promote? Are you doing anything these days? Jack Billings presents Haunted Apartment Complex on the Podmoth Network. It's a scripted comedy podcast. No improv like these loser podcasts. 
uh, we write down everything and then say it in a funny manner. Um, also, the award-winning No Time to Binge, where we watch the first and last episode of television shows and then make up what happens in the middle. And that is an improv comedy show. So it is a lesser podcast. That, um, that is true, yeah. Yeah. Michael Colby is in a lot of lesser podcasts. He'll be <coughs> the first to tell you that. By definition. <laughs> <laughs> of uh, me being in them <laughs> no <clears throat> all right if you want to hear more fictional stuff silicon angels is the it phone call mishaps of a sex robot shop uh dylan terry also wrote out 18 episodes of a uh, we call it a cyop which is a create your own pod venture you listen to the first episode and you decide which episode to listen after that you decide if this technology should allow you to be eaten by snakes or to send you to prison because you're kind of a piece of shit. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have a lot of weird stuff. Just open up anything, literally anything, your your e socks, and type in some nobodies. Uh, just shout at your neighbor, "Hey, are you some nobodies?" And most likely they'll tell you their favorite podcast. Uh, Dylan Terry, because you are absolutely a loser, will you tell us what our outgoing slogan is going to be? Nah, some kids were playing D and D. One of them got sucked into uh, an upside down world. Uh, with a monster, uh, there was a girl with psychic powers, and uh, the, and then some boring stuff happened, and then apparently some people died. Uh, next, time. <clears throat> <clears throat> thank you for watching PowerPoint Showdown. Today's winner will receive a fifty thousand dollar grant courtesy of some nobody's Patreon. Congratulations on your win! Join us next week for another showdown. Thanks for providing that big, 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 big prize, guys.